All right. Um, I think I'll just say, hey, screenshot this and read it yourself. Which I may do for the rest of the book. Nobody wants to hear me read. I don't need to. I'm going to try this once more. This is like the fourth time. It's recording at the top. It's not recording sideways. This is getting extremely upsetting. Spiritual warfare, man. Hmm. All right. We interrupt this program, A.T. Hagen, Thanksgiving, Part 1. In Jesus' name we pray, John concluded the Thanksgiving meal, grace, amen. Amen, the gathering at the table repeated. John loudly looked, inhaled as he looked over the table. Ladies, you have outdone yourselves. This is quite a feast. Anne blushed and said, thank you. It was quite a group effort, too. Ellie was our real ace in the hole this year in the way she straw-bossed the operation this morning so that everything would come to the table at the same time. Lisa and the girls did a lot of the prep work yesterday before I got home as well. We are becoming quite a team. Anne passed the carving utensils to John, who fingered the edge of the long carving knife for a moment before proceeding. This thing would pass spare pass for a short sword in an earlier time. He swooped the blade up in a fencer's salute toward the golden brown bird. Grinning at Melinda, he said, This is Tom's finest hour, and we should pay our respects. Now let us see if a long summer of eating grasshoppers has done right by him. He began carving the bird and putting slices on plates with Anne passing them down to his right and Ellie Strickland passing them on his left. John, Anne, Melinda, Robert, Luke, Lisa, Heather, Ed and Ellie Strickland had sat down to Thanksgiving dinner and the table was filled to capacity. When Ed had his plate filled, he admired it and said, the week after the impact, I'd never have thought we'd be sitting to such a nice Thanksgiving dinner, but the country and the community here as a whole have really pulled itself together. We truly have a lot to be thankful for this year. John grinned and said, yes, surely we do. We've come through hell and high water, but at least in our neighborhood, most of us are still here. That first 24 hours after the asteroid hit, I was afraid we'd all had it. I think it says something about the basic. Okay. Nature of humans. Once the accumulated nonsense of easy living gets knocked out of us, we remember that we once clawed our way to the top of the food chain. We've lost a lot, but we pulled ourselves, but pulled together, saved what we could, and sacrificed only what we absolutely had to. It's a shame we'll forget it all again as the passing years fade our recollection of what it was like. Not that we're, we've quite finished surviving, of course, but we've still got what's shaping up to be a severe winter to get through, but at least we're not fighting bandit hordes and each other trying to stay alive, like them guys over in that other story. Luke thoughtfully finished chewing a bite of turkey and swallowed and said, well, not here at least. The more urbanized areas have had a more difficult time of it. Lisa and I talked it over last night. As soon as we can get our house in town livable again, we're going to sell it. An event like the impact may never happen again in our lifetimes, but this one has taught me how thinly lies civilized behavior over the baser animal natures of a good many people. We're going to find a place out here in the country somewhere, and if we can't find what we want, we'll build it. We'll build even if it means settling, settling for a smaller house. I could have been making twice the salary I get here if I'd set up practice in D.C., Boston, or Atlanta, but what good would it have done me when the system broke down? As a species, I think we have been very foolish in not building more resiliency into our cities. Maybe this is because it's been so long since we've seen the elephant, so to speak, here on the home front. But we've just had a good lesson in what one major unexpected shock can do to American, indeed world civilization. I've decided if we won't build more resiliency into our urban areas and the best place to be is away from them. I'll work in Gainesville because that's where my practice is. But we're going to live in one of the smaller outlying towns like Archer, Newberry, or someplace similar. All right. Good night. Thank you all. Hope it's worth it somehow, some way.
I'm getting tired. <laughs>